Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And we are now live. We are now live. So yeah, pull my YouTube up and then you can mute that bad boy. What's going on everybody. Welcome to Wade's ventures, YouTube channel. This is Wade and I'm super excited. It's a Monday. I've got an amazing, cool guest. And so uh, let me get everything set up here and then we should be good to go. Let me see here. Uh, one second here. I'm having a hard time seeing. Oh, there we go. Cool. All right. Got me muted. Looking good. Let me say hello to some people in chat and then we'll get started. What's going on, Pac-Man? As always, thank you so much for joining. Um, I did get your comments. I'm running a little late. I'm in the weeds, but I would love to have your recommendation on my channel. That'd be amazing. Jenamine, how's it going? How are you? I saw that 10K on the bay just added you as a friend. That's super exciting. He's an amazing guy. Cindy, as always, welcome in the house. Stephanie, what's going on? Sell quick, ship flip. Uh, quick, excuse me, one of my favorite names of all time. What's going on, Lisa? What's going on? Welcome in. Amanda, what's going on? So give me one second, guys. I may have sneezed. Oh, maybe not. Okay, sorry. I'm dealing with this cold. It's crazy. So without further ado, everybody that joins this channel knows Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, I invite amazing people that sell in our community on all the platforms, primarily eBay, to join me on my YouTube channel to highlight them and uncover amazing people. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to a very special guest. And I'll tell you why he is very special is because he does some storage units and some other cool stuff that you guys haven't seen yet. So let me turn it over to him, have him introduce himself and uh, go ahead. Take it away, What's buddy. Up, guys? This is a uh, Corey. Whoever follows me on Instagram, it's uh, at storage unit hunter. Um, basically I buy storage units. <laughs> sell the contents, do a little bit of thrifting on the side. Um, this is my first time on a live video, so I don't really know what to say. <laughs> it's a little don't, weird. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. It gets, you have a little bit of nerves, but then after five, 10 minutes, you're good to go. And uh, we've got a really cool show for you guys. We have a haul video towards the end. I've got some things I want to show you. He's got some things he wants to show you. So, and he's a Steelers fan. I don't know if you guys seen that back there. Oh, so yeah, it's back there in the background. Jenny says go Steelers, which I, I I like my killer bees. Those are a good, good team. And uh, Shannon, what's going on from Florida? Welcome in. Corey, what's going on? All right, so let's get into this, guys. So I'm gonna ask a few questions and um and then we're going to get we're gonna dive right into it. So you said you do storage units. Guess what? Mr. Wade does storage units too, so that's gonna be amazing. So Tell us a little bit about your background. I want to start there. Full-time, part-time, and what platforms are you selling on currently? <clears throat> well, um, basically, I've been doing it full-time. Well, I started, I guess, partially part-time when I was in high school. Um, right now, it's full-time. Uh, basically, got started. I knew this question will probably come up, so I'll just run into it real quick. I got started um, as a kid. I'd heard about storage auctions. Didn't really know much about them. Talked to my parents. And then... As the shows started to come out and everything, I did a lot of research into the business and all that and um, started looking into it and trying to figure out how I could actually buy storage units and all that. And I uh, talked to my parents. They let me pull like $200 out of savings, which was basically like all of it at the time. And then I uh, went to auctions. I actually went to auctions for about a year before just to watch it and see what happens and how it all goes. And then um, just started buying. I mean, uh, my first unit was five bucks, and then my next unit after that was, I think, fifty dollars. And wow! Oh man, I'm I really want to get this interview going because I love storage units. Let's say hello, a few more people here, just because it's early. Gina, welcome in. Deb from Mississippi, and uh, welcome in. Good stuff. So, sounds like you, your parents, kind of like supported you in in buying storage units. Yeah, they did. And the funniest thing about it too, is that I always forget this, but whenever I remember it, it brings it up is that, um, my parents back in the early, like, you know, the late nineties, early two thousands actually went to a storage auction and bought a unit because they were selling a townhouse at the time and needed a washer and dryer and just thought, well, let me try this place out. And I think it's funny that they bought a storage unit years ago and now I'm doing it full time as a business. That is amazing. It's really cool to have parents to like support you. Are they ever interested in what you get? Yeah, um, my dad's actually retired, so he helps me out. He does a lot of my shipping and everything online. Can't sit there and not say anything about him because he's he does a lot of the stuff for me. Um, gives him something to do, but he packs up everything. But then everything else, moving units and 
cleaning stuff out. Listing is all on my part. But uh, yeah, they really have a, a good interest into it. And then my mom at the same time also likes to help out at flea markets during the spring and summer. She loves that kind of stuff. So it's kind of like a family ordeal, I guess you could say. But in all reality, it's mine. It's my baby. It, it, it's so awesome because I don't know if you know, but my mom, <laughs> she goes with me to all the storage auctions. And um, Ashley goes with me to a good portion of the storage auctions. And then they give their two cents. And it's yeah. funny, whenever, whenever I buy a unit, um, you bring, I bring my mom. She's like, yeah, she tells me stuff that I have no idea what it is sometimes, like, you know, China and stuff like that. Does your dad ever, like, you know, recognize stuff from when he was younger or, or possibly stuff that you don't know? Oh, there's plenty of times that's happened, especially with, like, like you said, China and glassware, stuff like that. He always recognizes that stuff before I do. But, I mean, throughout the years, I've actually caught on to a lot of stuff. And um, he'll notice stuff, too, that I won't even see when I'm looking at a unit from the door or vice versa. And then we'll go back and chat for a couple seconds about it. Did you see that? Did you see this? And figure out where we want to go. What's going on, Barry? I think that's awesome. I, I, we're, okay, let, let's get into this here. What state are you currently in right now? Virginia, Northern Virginia. Hmm. And I, uh, now real quick, are you, are you buying, it sounds like you're buying live, but have you ever bought online storage auctions? Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> oh. um, I am not a fan of all of the online auctions. A lot of the facilities in our area went to online for a while and then they ended up switching back because they ended up losing a hell of a lot of money doing it. So, yep. yep. So I've got a couple tidbits for online storage auctions. What state do I live in? I live in Oregon guys. Um, and the facilities here are amazing. I really like Oregon. Um, we get a lot of like, you know, Nike, Adidas, Columbia, cause it's all right here, the corporate offices. So, um, and I do, as you guys know, I actually got started. I wouldn't be here talking with you live if it wasn't for storage auctions. That's pretty much how I got into eBay. Was I was purchasing seven to eight auctions, and then you know, and then I was like, where do I where do I sell this stuff? And then eBay came up, and I started selling on eBay. So this is going to be a really good show because if you want to learn about storage auctions, it sounds like we've got an amazing panel here. So we've, we've got a little bit of knowledge about it. Yes, least, I guess. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. So. So tell me a little bit about, <laughs> tell me uh, real quick, this isn't on my sheet of questions. And by the way, I keep looking up here because there's some great questions, but tell me what has been the most strangest finds you have found in a storage auction? Oh man, strangest. That's kind of difficult due to the fact that like everyone has their own theory mm -hmm. of strange. Yep. Um, I guess more that I can think of is when I first got started, like one of my first maybe 10 units, there was like breast implants that would go inside of like a bra or something. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing about that was, is that they were labeled on the uh, box. It was to someone's aunt. It was like a present to their aunt, which I thought was just hilarious. That um, is, that's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. I've and never then, had that. I bought one before too, where the, um, those Gatorade coolers you see on the sidelines of a football game. That was the people's toilet. Oh, that's that disgusting. Was, that was just a, I got sick for a week after that. And I swear it was from the smell that came out of that when I looked in it. <laughs> oh. it, was, it was a terrible, terrible time. <laughs> to oh say the least. That's horrible. That's horrible. <laughs> um, what, what, what's some of your best finds you found in re, in, in regards to like reselling? My best finds. And I actually just made a video about this, um, on my personal YouTube account. It's, um, I don't know my best the best one was probably the unit that got me hooked into the business. Uh, I bought a unit for $460 and I based it off of a little like suede gun case that was up front and two ammo cans that were on the ground. Bought it, opened up the gun case. And this was when I was like, I think I was 15 years old at the time. Um, opened up this gun case and there was nothing in it but four bullets. I took it, threw it to the back, slammed the door shut. And these were actually the big wooden vaults mm -hmm. that uh, are four foot wide, eight foot tall, eight foot deep. Um, then we went... They forklifted it outside. We started moving it and everything and uh, moved some of the stuff on the right side. There were some of those three drawer little plastic cabinet things, moved them out. And then uh, right back there was six gun cases laying across the ground. And we pulled them out and they ended up pulling six guns out of there. And the most expensive one that I sold for just under $3,000 was a, a World War II civili civilian, civilian issued German Luger. I can oh talk that would be great. Dude, you probably find all kinds of that stuff where you're at, you know? Yeah. 
we find a very uh, a very large amount of military around here. Um, a lot of like just uniforms and everything, but it all still sells really good online. Hmm. I. <laughs> So what's what's your state's law on guns? Because I know if you like, if I find guns in the storage units here, I kind of need to see if they're hot. I, obviously, those ones are so old. But do you know? Um, do you have to like? Do you look and see if they're, you know, stolen and they're you have to turn them in or anything like that? Um, the gun laws here are basically if you buy it in a storage unit, it's yours. But I mean, if it's stolen, that's a completely different thing. But we're actually uh, good friends with the sheriff in our county, so whenever we find them, we take them to him, and he runs the serial number for us and everything. To make sure they're not stolen or anything but other than that they're uh, legally ours huh and we have a couple quite by the way guys if you have questions put oh, them yeah. in the chat i do have that open um if you have questions so jen says what um uh so basically what state were you from again she was asking oh virginia not right. of northern virginia yes virginia um and i um <clears throat> you you probably find do you find a lot of vintage stuff antique stuff in those storage units over there Oh, yeah, depending on the area. The farther north you go towards D.C., you find a lot of that stuff. Or if you go out west, you'll find more of it towards the mountains. Um, basically, it's a throw-up about everything. I find it all. <laughs> I don't even know the way to put it. <laughs> I mean, you find all different sorts of things up and down. So um, how, what's the most expensive unit you ever bought, storage unit-wise? Uh, it was $1,950. It was a 10 by 30, and it ended up being the people's like entire basement of stuff and a few of those things are actually in my most recent video too i think i titled it um i can actually look and tell you real quick uh top best storage unit finds huh That's what i titled that and and have you at the percentage like have you lost on a lot of storage units or i mean was there any storage units that you because there's a couple in my mind that i'm like i what was i thinking there's been a few like that and uh mold is one of the biggest things when they're when there's uh too much water that gets into them and whatnot um, yeah. That's one of the biggest things that is when I've lost money. But usually the ones that I pay not a whole lot for, and then that makes me a lot of money. It kind of like, I guess, goes and takes away that uh, the small losses that I have. So a lot of you guys know, and real quick, Vancouver, Washington. I was just there. I was just in Vancouver, Washington uh, Saturday, actually. I was over there Saturday. But so... You guys know one of the best storage units I bought was um, I bought it from an ex Nike employee. Okay. And he was an ex Nike employee from possibly earlier than the 70s, but 70s and 80s. And um, I bought two units, both in his name. And these, um, that's kind of what jump started a lot of my stuff. But um, in one of the units, there was probably about 2,000 items of vintage Nike in the bag. He used to sell Nike. Um, and as you guys know, in fact, let me show you one thing here. I haven't put this online yet, but uh, this is um, this is one of the cool things. Now, back in the 80s, 70s, and 80s, a lot of blue tag Nike, that's what he had in there. And he had it all, like, for example, this is the original bag, like the original plastic that's on it. Um, that came out of his unit. And so I don't know how much I, how much I made on that unit. I would If I would have put a price tag on it after everything's said and done, um, probably cl close to 50 K $50,000 on that unit. And there was two of them. And, uh, I don't know how long, how long he worked for Nike. Like when I went into the unit, there was a bunch of like old pamphlets with him on it and the Nike team. And uh, so a lot of, a lot of cool stuff, but, um, but my worst unit was the, uh, first unit I ever bought. And I don't know what I was thinking. I think and you can contest to this, right? When you're new buying storage units, your your arm just goes up and up and up. And you can always tell a new buyer because they never think. They just constantly move up, right? Oh, um, yeah, 100%. So. I always think, I think back to like when I first started, maybe like the first six months and just think of how much money I probably wasted or things that I could have sold for more and just gave away, basically. Mm -hmm. That's just one of those things that always racks in my head. Um, so we have one question from Frosty. Hey, Wade. Love your channel. How long were you selling on eBay before you started on YouTube? Um, I would say about eight months before I started YouTube. And then I talked to uh, 10K on the Bay and, and uh, convinced me to start up a social media YouTube channel. So, all right. So let's get back into this because this isn't about me. This is about our amazing guest here. Okay. So how long have you been selling on eBay? Um, on eBay itself, I guess through storage units, it's been about six, seven years. 
because I've been doing storage units for coming up on seven years now in June. Um, I've been selling on eBay, I think I'd say about six years then. I didn't really do a whole lot of eBay selling prior to, uh, or when I first started. And then I did some before that, but that was just like stuff around the house. And... Mm -hmm. I I find it really fun to like meet cool people that do storage units and then like go with them to go to the storage lockers live because I almost find it fun to just not buy one. And then if they buy one, like go through it, you know, and help them. It's just, it's an addicting high for me to buy storage units. What about you? Oh, it is. It can be very addicting. I mean, there's times I've bought and I remember there was a time when I was in a cast in one leg and I couldn't, I couldn't walk. I was on crutches or on a little scooter and I ended up buying six units in one day. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but I ended up having to pay a few friends to come out and move them for me. So give me the day in the life of you. Like, okay, so first of all, I want to know what site do you use? Do you use um, storageauctionunitlist.com or whatever that site is? Or or how do you find your storage locker? Uh, do you probably, actually, you probably get an email from the auctioneers, right? You're on their mailing list. Um, uh, The auctioneer that we have doesn't, I don't, I don't believe he even has a mailing list, but he does, Um, he's on auction zip for extra space storage. They do that run, and there's a few different runs through northern Virginia, then middle part of Virginia, out west and all that, and then down to Richmond as well. Um, he does all that, and he advertises that on Auction Zip. I use storage unit auction list for other auctions, depending on where they're at. And then I've also got like my personal facility that I ran at. I know when theirs is, and we get calls from facilities. The managers will call us and let us know when the auction is. That's amazing. Now, tell me a little bit about... Tell me how it works. So you you know you found your auction. Then what is the day in life of you? You, you I'm assuming you have. And by the way, guys, anybody that's into storage auctions, you always want to get um, one key with five locks. You can get them, you know, or or more than that, but you can get them at different places, and that way you can use one key for multiple locks. Let's see, um, let's answer. Sorry, guys, you have you have a lot of questions, so we'll answer a few questions here. Uh, I know some people research owners of units. Do you do that with? The, did you do that with the Nike unit? Um, so I'll answer that first, and then I'll have him answer that. Um, you can. It is public knowledge when people lose a unit, guys. And by the way, before we go any further, and I think you can contest to this, it is sad when people lose these units. Um, and the way that it works for me is as if there's personal taxes, personal photos, kids stuff, stuff like that. I leave it behind, and then that way the facility can call the old unit. Uh, excuse me, call the old owner or somebody that's in their family to pick that stuff up. But that being said, um, I used to do um, research on the people losing the units and I don't anymore. And on the Nike unit, I did do a little research. Some websites like public storage will list um, in some areas like a, a vague list of what's in the unit. They won't go into the unit. They won't go into the boxes, but they'll list what they see on the website so you can kind of get an idea what about you do you do you do any research on the people losing the unit um i've done it before just out of curiosity i guess you could say but um normally if i find like personal documents usually i'll return that stuff depending on if the uh manager of the facility let us know at the auction um like you said it's sad that people lose their units it really is i remember like the first in the first 10 units i bought one of the guys the guys um stuff was all his military certificates and books and everything in there. And I felt bad because I'm like, this is all this guy's stuff. This is his whole life. And then I wanted to find him and return it to him. And it ended up just sitting there in the garage and collecting dust week after week. And I'm like, well, I can't just sit around and do this. I'll become a hoarder. <laughs> so I basically have gotten to the point now where if they don't ask for it back, I just toss it. And then anything that has like a personal number on it, like social security cards or something like that, we just destroy them. Um, so we have a, a question from Deb. So when you bought those six units, did you have to clean the, all six units out the same day? Um, I believe that was with extra space. That was a run that started up north and went down to uh, the southern part of where I live at. Um, I think at that time they were giving us 48 to 72 hours to clean them out. So two to three days. And then they, the managers knew me and knew my situation. So they ended up giving me... Um, a couple extra days to do them. I think it was on a Wednesday that auction was, and I had to have them out by like Saturday, close of business. Yeah. And a little tip guys for storage um, facilities, obviously it varies, especially with the mom and pop ones, but even the big chains do this. If they know you, um, they don't charge me a deposit. Um, and sometimes they do, depending on if you're new bidder, 
Um, but more importantly, if you buy one or two storage units or, or more, you can ask the manager and a lot of times they'll give you an extra couple of days to clear it out, especially if it's like a 10 by you know 20 or a bigger unit. So um, now, so you buy these units, do you have a uh, facility that you bring this stuff to? Like, do you have, or do you use your house or how does that work? So basically I rent out my own storage unit that's 15 foot wide, 44 foot deep. It's uh, basically an RV and boat unit, but I think out of the, there's probably 40 or 50 of those units at my facility. I think maybe 10 of them are used for RV and boats, but uh, I use that and that's where I take everything back to. I also have two trailers that I haul everything in and then um, stuff there. That's where I go through everything, sort through trash and then all my flea market stuff will sit there. And then everything that comes home for eBay comes in the truck home and I list it all here. And that's where we keep all the eBay stuff at the house. Can I just say that behind you looks amazingly clean for being a storage unit buyer, <laughs> like very clutter free, you free see right behind the couch over there or this way. It doesn't look that good, but it works. Hello, hello. I can hear you. You there? Okay. Good. Woo, man. Did I lose you? Yeah, I don't know what happened there. It just went quiet for a second. I, I, okay, sorry. Um, woo, man. I thought I lost you guys. Okay, cool. Let's see. What was my question, by the way, guys? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you uh, lost me too. Guys, guys, I got new internet today, so um, apparently I got to work on that. Let's see. Uh, what, what's going on, Barry? What's going on? You guys are all back. Good, good. Alexander, I'm back. Deb, can you see me? Can you see me, guys? Um, all right. So, um, what? Oh, yes. My question was: um, Are you donating a lot of the stuff uh, for tax write-offs? Are you going to Goodwill Salvation Army and donating a lot? Um, how much are you donating? And and then also, I'm assuming you have like a big bin to throw the stuff away to throw it uh, to trash it, right? So basically, my do my donation part of the year, I guess you could say, is mainly during the flea market season. I'll run stuff through a flea market about twice. And then after that, everything just goes to donation. Um, and then clothes that are bad, they'll go to donation as well. And then as far as trash, I basically just load up my truck every day. I'm down working, going through stuff, just piles up to about sometimes the height of the cab or even taller. And then it all just goes to the landfill on the way back in the next day. That's pretty efficient. Uh, do you get like, do you see a lot of the same people at these storage auctions like I do? Yeah, it's basically like the same 10 or 15 buyers. We all know each other by name and everything. And, do you, do you ever get in bidding wars? Uh, sometimes it's yeah. happened. Yep. And uh, it's, it's nice to get to know like the, you got to kind of like get to know who you're bidding against to kind of see what their tendencies are. Like the, there's a lot of people that won't spend over a certain amount. They're looking for cheaper units or some people that are looking for like neatly stacked boxes or some people will take anything. So you kind of got to know like who you're bidding with. And I think that it's, um, it's kind of crucial too, to like, because if you go, like, I would recommend going a few times without buying any units just to get kind of the idea of it. Cause I think what happens is, is they smell blood when you're new. Cause a lot of the people are in a click. They, they understand who's been there and who hasn't. So, yeah, that's kind of how we are as well. Like we know who buys what, um, who's going to, if a big unit opens up a 10 by 30, that's like just loaded and it's clean as all get out. We know which person's going to more than likely buy that maybe the heavy hitters and everything and then also if there's a new person that comes i mean there's a it sounds bad but there's a basically an initiation process into this and i went through it too where people will just bid you up because if we don't want you to if we don't think you're here to stay and you're not here to do this as an actual business you're just going to come and waste our money then we're going to try to get you out yeah and a lot you'll find that a lot it's really common and the way that there's ways you can overcome that um but the, a lot of people, they think, you know, from the TV show, they think storage units is glamorous and it is uh, in a little bit, but you remember after you bid it and after you buy it, you got to remove it. And uh, that's a lot of work. A lot of people don't like that aspect of it, especially if you buy a unit that doesn't work out for you, 
you still got to remove it. You can't just leave the stuff there. So um, exactly, that's a big part is that people think it's just a glamorous job. I mean, it like you said, it is in some cases, but um, like you also said, if there's a unit that's full of just trash, you've got to move it. You can't leave it. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, flipping mama says you look like a young. Um, ha- have you seen that WWE guy? I don't know. That's second second comment up. <laughs> no, um, really it right now though. Holy- <laughs> I am a little jealous. You do grow in perfect a perfect beard. It looks like. <laughs> I try. I try. Um, okay, so. Okay, so, I can um, see that. Let's go on to the next question, guys. What? Okay, so what are you passionate about selling? So I know you buy storage units. You get all kinds of stuff, clothing, hard goods. But what do you personally like selling? What are you interested in? I'd have to say. I don't know. My biggest thing that I really like to sell is, I guess, like vintage video games and vintage electronics. Just for some reason, that's just grabbed me. I mean, I guess video games, because I'm younger, I like playing, I play video games myself. But in the same aspect, I like the older consoles, I like the older games. And then I also just like vintage electronics, like anything older that sells. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, 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 I'm going to get, by the way, guys, people are asking for your link, your YouTube link. Oh, um, yeah. I'm going to, uh, I'll get that for you guys. So, um, good question is, um, what are you only on eBay right now for platforms? So like what platforms are you selling on? Yeah, just eBay for uh, online sales. Okay. And um, are you planning on branching out to any other platforms? Do you sell locally by chance? I'm assuming that you probably sell some some items locally. Yeah, I sell larger items like furniture and everything locally, um, either on Facebook marketplaces or on um, Craigslist or LetGo or whatever apps there are. Um, I've looked into Amazon, but it literally it confuses me. Like I've got no clue as to what to do with it. Yeah, Amazon would be tough with if you're doing more than just storage units. I think it would be tough. Um, it'd be interesting to do because you know you're not guaranteed the items that you get in the storage units. And exactly. So, so um, what's your what's your 2018 goals? I mean, you said you do this full time. You buy a lot of storage units. Um, do you are you married? Do you are you the only one working in the house? No, I'm not married. I'm single. Um, my, I guess you could say my goals for this year, I, I like to set smaller goals. I've got a goal right now, by the end of the month, I want to have at least a thousand listings on eBay. Um, that's the one I'm really pushing towards right now. And then it'd be nice to like double my sales from last year, but I mean, it's just more of pushing to, uh, to get to that point. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I envy you. Cause I think that's amazing. You're single. You can go out and buy all these storage units and, uh, ladies, anybody watching now or after want to slip him a message. You definitely can. <laughs> um, yeah, and definitely hit the like button, Jen. I mean, I appreciate that. That's awesome, guys. So real quick, give us a few tips or hacks about storage unit buying that you've done because you've done a lot of them. You've probably done more than I have recently. So can you uh, can you give our viewers some tips or hacks or tricks or anything that regarding storage units? Um, I would say one thing, and I know I mentioned it earlier, and I know you mentioned it as well, is that go to a couple auctions. If you're thinking about doing it, go to a few auctions and just check them out. Don't buy, just stand in the background, get to know the faces, get to know the people who mainly bid. Um, and then you just get feel feel comfortable with the whole um, auction process, everything that's going on. Um, and then, like you also said, locks that all are key to like. That's the best thing to do. I was very bad at leaving keys and having to cut locks like weekly when I first started. And then I finally got... Uh, locks that are key to like and then uh, get a nice flashlight that's a good just thing to have get down on the, even if you have to get down on your hands and knees to look around look under things it's the best way I've found many of things that people didn't even see until after I bought it and then I'm like look down underneath that table or something like that yep um, so mama said what's the most expensive unit you have bought I think you said it earlier in the in the show but uh, what is that for the viewers here uh, it's $1,950 is the most expensive unit that I've purchased now, a lot of people they've seen the TV show, you know, Storage Wars, and you see those lockers go up, you know, ten grand. Um, it may be different where you're at. Where I'm at, it's definitely not the case. I mean, take the show as like a good like backbone, um, and then realize that there's a lot of things different. Like for example, the drama's not there. You get less people a lot of times. Um, the the prices are not nearly that high. Like for example, where their five thousand dollar unit ours would probably be a thousand. Um, so there's a lot of different, different tendencies from the show and real life. 
Um, I can tell you though, when you're new and you first go to a storage auction, it seems like it goes really quick, but as you go to them, it starts slowing down. And that's when you can really make um, good money because your brain will like scan the unit and you typically want to scan the unit um, from right to left and then kind of in your mind figure out, okay, how much can I see in front of me? What's that going to bring me? Uh, and then bid on that, not necessarily what you can't see. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's actually a really good way to put it. Um, when it first started, I remember going to auctions and it's like, we'd have a run of five or six facilities all day. And then it seemed like five hours later, we're done. It's just quick and over with. Now it's like we're at the second facility of the day. And I feel like I've been going all day, but at the same aspect, it's really good too, because, um, you get to, like you said, slow down, take a look at a unit and actually figure out what's in there instead of just glancing at it real quick and running on by. Mm -hmm. Have you, um, um, so when you, do you have any like bidding techniques that you use? Um, I use a few bidding techniques. So bidding techniques are basically when the auctioneer is taking bids. Um, there's a few bidding te techniques you can do. You have to be a little careful. I'm, I'm more of an aggressive bidder when I bid on storage, um, units. Um, I'm pretty aggressive. So, you know, a lot of times our auctioneer will start a thousand, even though the unit's not nearly worth a thousand and he'll move down. Some auctioneers will go from the bottom and move up. Um, and so when I get a unit, let's say somebody bids a hundred and in my mind, I would like to bid 500. Sometimes I'll jump the bid to 250 and see if I can squash it quick. Um, and you know, there's a few other techniques too. Do you have any bidding techniques that you use? And obviously it's different because you know, the people around you. So, yeah, I guess mine, um, I, I don't know if they're called techniques or not, but I like to stand in the back of a crowd. I like to see who I'm bidding against and know who it is. And then in the same aspect, um, it depends on the unit. And usually I'm one of the ones to come in like the very end, like right before he says sold is when I like to bid just because it gives that person a little bit of extra time to think about it. Like, do I really want to move this today? Do I really want to deal with this stuff? Mm -hmm. And then, um, I usually do that. I'm always like, I always wait till the very end for some reason. I've just done that for a while. And then depending on the unit itself, if I really like it and I really think it'll go higher, but if I started out with a really high bid, so what I think is like almost max on it, then I'll just do that. Like say a unit that should only go for like 250 bucks. And then when the auctioneer says 200, just bid because it throws people off their game. Mm -hmm. um, we have a question. So question for both of you guys. Found any autographed sports memorabilia? Yes, that I have. <clears throat> I actually put some in my most recent video. Yeah, my most recent video. There's some in there too. Um, and then there's actually a couple pieces hanging on the wall that are Steeler stuff that's autographed. I would love, 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 love to do a lot. Like, so you guys know that you can purchase glasses and then in the middle they have a, um, they have a camera. I would love to do that. But the problem is, is it's kind of frowned upon if you film at a store, live storage auction. Um, I don't know. What do you think about that? Do you, have you thought about that? Cause I know having a YouTube channel and doing storage auctions, like that's the, that's like the Holy grail is to be able to film the whole process for people. Oh yeah. Yeah. I wish I could. But, um, like you said, it is very frowned upon, especially the auctioneer that we go to on one of the main runs that I'm on is that they just don't allow filming at the facilities and everything. So I just do it afterwards. <laughs> yep. Um, so do you, uh, um, do you do caravan auctions a lot? Caravan auctions, guys, by the way, it's like, let's say you've got extra space storage or one of the big corporate facilities. You'll start at one location and then you'll kind of go from one to the other, to the other, to the other in one city. Um, do you do caravan auctions? Yeah, I've actually got one, um, coming up on Thursday, which is an extra space storage. Um, I like those the best just because you can hit so many facilities in one day rather than go into like an auction that only has one one facility in a day or two facilities or something like that. Yep. A few tips I like about caravan auctions, guys, is it uh, helps in many ways. One, um, one issue that you're going to find being a new, new storage unit buyer is you're going to want a unit. Um, everybody wants to experience it. Everybody's going to want a unit. You're probably going to overpay for it. Um, but having a caravan auction, you're going to have multiple opportunities to, to look at multiple units. So in your minds, you know, you know, like if you went to one auction, you're like, crap, there only, there's only five units. And once the five units are done, you're done. But a caravan auction, they'll have multiple units at different locations. So in your minds, you know, you have, you have time to make a really good decision on buying one storage unit. Um, I think that's a big key. And then also um, caravan auctions are good too, because if you get people that are aggressive bidders, 
a lot of times wait for the first or second look or excuse me for the second or third location and let people buy a few units because then they'll bought the unit they'll get it out of their mind that they bought a unit and they'll have a lot of merchandise they need to haul so the, towards the end of the auction you'll find that you'll probably find some pretty good deals with less competition what do you think yeah that's very true um i always just basically play it by ear like they're all one single auction just because if something good comes up i might want to jump on it but that is a very good point too is just to wait and let people spend their money that's the way that i look at it yep um and it's just it's nice because it, there's facility after facility and you can there's multiple units in a day rather than like you said there could be only like five at a uh, facility or something like that um there i think my my largest one that i went on was down in richmond they were extra space had just bought out a mom and pop facility and there was probably 60 or 70 units for the whole day. Oh my gosh. Do you do pot? Have you ever done pot auctions? Pot auctions, guys, are the, the pods that they drop off of your house. You fill it up and then they pick it up and they take it away. I have not done pot auctions before. There's a pods facility, I think like 45 minutes or an hour from my house, which I've been meaning to go up to them. And I always forget when their auctions are. I think they're like the third Wednesday of the month or something along those lines. But I want to go up there and look at those. They're fun. And what people don't realize is pod auctions. If I, let's say I need a pod auction, right? Um, a pod will get dropped off of my um, garage. I will fill it up. Then they'll, they'll pick it up. They'll bring it to their facility. Um, and that's very expensive. It's more expensive doing pods a lot of times than it is doing actual storage units where you rent one and you, you drop your stuff off. So, um, you know, people forget pod auctions are expensive. I've done pod auctions only like three or four times. And, and only twice have I bought any, but there are they are extremely fun. What about any government auctions? Do you anything any government auctions or anything like that? I've not done government auctions either. I mean, I've I've looked at them online, and um, usually, I mean, we're close to DC, so there are a lot of government auctions. But usually, it's just like um, crappy furniture, desks, cubicles, things of that nature. Nothing really too crazily good. Um, yeah, nothing really big on government auctions. I've looked at them, but never really found much. Now, are you sourcing anywhere else other than storage units? As of right now, I'm not. I used to source at like just local antique auctions and uh, just general household auctions. I still do that every from time to time. But storage units, I've been able to, since I've been out of high school, I mean, I graduated in 2014. So if that gives people to let you know how young I am, I started this when I was 15 years old. But um. Since I've been out of high school, I've been able to go really full time into it, and uh, that basically takes up most of my time. I have had an itch lately for the past couple of months to go out to um, go to Goodwills or go down to the Goodwill bins and source from there as well. Uh, Deb said that we do government surplus. I haven't done a lot of that. I would love to do that. Um, I, well, I guess I do on Gov deals and some other liquidation sites, but nothing in person. That would be fun. Um, Okay, I'm going to ask you a question. You, I don't know if you've done it, but I am super... St it's it's fun talk. First of all, it is fun talking with somebody that does storage units because it's almost like we we understand each other in a, in a, in a weird way. But um, there is a type of storage... It's not storage unit. It's, it's auctions. Type of an auction that I've always wanted to do. And that is buy baggage from airplanes or air airline, you know, like um, the airports. So when there's unclaimed baggage, I've always wanted to do that auction where you buy the baggage. Have you heard about that? I, yeah, I have heard about those actually. And I looked into it for a while to try to figure out how to do them. But um, that, I'm right with you. I've wanted to do those for so long now just to see what it's like. Oh my gosh. I would I would be like, I'm taking this whole row. <laughs> and then it'd be so much fun. Jewelry. What kind of stuff do you, do you get jewelry? A lot of jewelry. Um, yeah, yeah. I do find um, a fair amount of like gold and silver and stuff but i basically hold on to it as of for right now just because the prices are low but what um isn't it amazing that you can take your dad's storage unit buying with you like isn't that such a cool experience oh it is it's awesome and uh my dad actually used to own his own vending machine company back in the early 2000s so i think he likes it too as well to see that i'm working for myself and basically the only person i have to answer to is myself who i believe is the hardest person you can answer to Oh yeah, <laughs> believe me. I th I think that's it's it's really it's really cool. I, you know, it's it's taking nothing and, and turning it into something. I think it's really awesome. And and people lose storage units so many different ways. And um, like I said, it's sad. It's a sad process, but 
it's reality. And, and so I'm glad that, you know, as opposed to it go, all going to a landfill, you know, people go through it, find treasure and resell it. And it's, and those of you who have not done storage unit buying, um, both our amazing guest and myself has YouTube videos on it. So go check it out. I'm going to put his channel guys in the um, chat here. And if you guys are watching, can you put what state you live in? Because there are a lot of states I know about storage unit buying. I'm curious to see which states you guys live in. Just put your state if you can. But um, all right. So um, let's get into the meat potatoes and then we'll do our um, small little haul, haul video here. Um, so tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel. It sounds like it's all about um, storage unit buying, which is amazing. How many do you, first of all, do you have any YouTubers that you follow that do storage uh, auction buying? Um, I think the only one that I really keep track of is a storage auction pirate. I, uh, you've probably heard of him too. Mm -hmm. If I can just okay. think of what to say. <laughs> so I've got but, um, two. Uh, let's see. Um, have you heard of Locker Life? Or Locker's Life? Oh, man. What's... Uh, let's see. Uh, Wait, I think I know who you're talking about because I think that, that's the other one I follow too. Um, um, let's see. Uh, Locker Life is one of them. And then what about... Um, oh, the big one is Resell Rabbit. Is it Resell Rabbit? Uh, he does... All he does all storage unit buying. Oh no, I've never heard of him. Oh, you should. Yeah, he's sure. He does, he does live. He has a, a massive warehouse. Yeah, re resell rabbit. I think is what it is. Okay, and uh, then the other ones that I do uh, follow follow is a uh, gamers lockers life. They're out of no. Oh, that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. They do a lot of online storage auction buying. Though. Yes, they do. I've talked yeah. to them a few times as well. Really, I yeah, I I would love to do a show with them. They they're amazing, and they got a big YouTube channel. They do. Uh, they got a massive YouTube channel. All right, guys. So I'm going to ask a few more questions. Put it in the chat if you got questions about storage units. We'll both answer it. Um, I really like different perspectives. I'm really intrigued. Do you get a lot of clothes? What, what do you do with your clothes? Do you um, kind of sift through the clothes or are you primarily hard goods? Well, I guess I'm. you could say I'm primarily hard goods right now. I used to have a guy who bought basically everyone who do does storage units around here. He used to buy all their clothes and I think he paid like right around 75 cents a piece. So it was nice because I could take him five, six, seven hundred pieces at a time. But um, he stopped buying his eBay. I think at one point he was up to like 12,000 listings on eBay just oh doing gosh. primarily used clothes. And so I was selling to him. And then I decided to, um, within the past like month, I decided to get back into selling used clothes. So I'm back into doing that now. Um, and then other than that, it's basically hard goods. All right. Uh, so do you have... Um... Uh, when you when you take like are you taking are you doing the listing or is your primarily your dad doing the listing for hard goods? I'm the one who basically lists everything. The only thing he really lists is uh, DVDs and stuff along those lines because it's easy for him just to type in the UPC code and move on with it. Yep. Everything uh, else I do, um, I take just to take all the pictures and everything. I don't his picture taking sometimes pisses me off, but <laughs> <laughs> that's a father son thing. Yeah. Well, it, they're they're uh, you know. It, we're a little bit better with the, the electronics sometimes, but yeah. that, the, <laughs> um, what, so does, so you said your mom is a little bit into it too. Does she ever go to any of your storage units and uh, locally? Oh, sometimes she'll come along, but usually not. Usually she's just, she likes to come along with the flea markets and everything. Um, she loves doing flea markets, like setting up, setting them up for some reason. And I'm like, eh, more power to you. Cause I hate this part. <laughs> so every, every, uh, do you do it every flea markets every weekend then? Um, we usually do flea markets in like the later spring, all through the summer, and then the early part of the fall. So and I'm just waiting for the weather to break now. But according to the news, we've got a snowstorm coming up in the next couple oh, days, so that'll geez. be fun. <laughs> weather probably plays a big, big part of. I was at a store live storage auction um, a week ago, actually, and um, I got there, and this was a unit I would have bought, but then it was just nasty weather out, and I was like, uh, eh, you know, I, I didn't end up buying it. Oh, there's been plenty of times that's happened to me, where if it's pouring down rain or it's going to rain for the next few days, it's if it's something I'd usually buy, I just won't buy it just because of that, that yep. issue. Well, if that's if one of the trailers is full. The trailer's that's empty, I might just buy it just because. That's the key, guys. If it's nasty weather out, you may get better deals. Good. Uh, so what Jen said, how are you the only child? Or do you have any brothers or sisters? I do have an older sister. What does she think about your storage unit buying? Oh, she, I, I couldn't even tell you. I mean, I guess she doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't care. But it's like, yep. 
she enjoys it sometimes. She'll come to auctions every now and again if she's not working or something or in the summer when she's off work. That or um, she'll come down to the storage unit and dig through stuff. But usually that's what they do is come through, dig through a little bit, look in boxes, leave the trash for me to clean up, and then go home. <laughs> uh, uh, we have a question in chat. What's your favorite football team? Oh, um, I don't even know. <laughs> that's a good – that's a – Damn good question. <laughs> no, the Pittsburgh Steelers, of course. I was born and raised a Pittsburgh fan. That's awesome. <laughs> you guys have some really diehard fans, too. That's really cool. Um, all right. So do you all source yard sales any or only storage auctions? I'll leave that up to you. Lately, you said you're only doing storage auctions, though. Yeah, usually in the summer, if it's a, like a nice weekend, I'll be at the flea market. So I really don't have time. Sometimes if I get a minute, I'll go and run around to a couple different booths and look and see what they have. But usually... That's uh, I don't get the time to do it. Maybe sometimes in the afternoon, but all the good stuff's probably snatched up by then. So I um, primary I used to be all storage units, um, and then a baby happens, <laughs> and work, and um, it got easier for me to go to you know, thrift stores and and find vintage stuff there. So I'm say I'm I'm probably like ninety ten, but you're talking to a guy that you know was buying, you know, ten a month, which. 10 a month without having a storage facility or, or a big place to store. It's a lot of storage units. So um, it's, um, you know, I'm this summer, I'm definitely going to get back into it. A lot of my viewers are really intrigued about storage units. Every, every reseller on YouTube has their thing, right? Like for example, um, I can go to like, um, I'm trying to think like Nicole, she's into like, she's, she does women's clothing. She does it to a T. And then you got Hazel Hearts Vintage. She's amazing. She has like she does a lot of clothing, vintage items. And then you go all the way to the other spectrum there, and you've got people like you know Casey who knows all about just pretty much everything. Um, but I'm kind of known for storage units. You're kind of known for storage units. So every reseller is known for something. And and the point of this is, I think this this summer, I definitely want to get back into it. And I would love to show you guys more um, storage, unit, you know, techniques and different things you can do. Just, uh, it's tough sometimes because, you know, when you don't have room for it, you gotta be really careful. So, but I, I gotta get, I gotta get more space. Darn HOA around here, <laughs> you know? And that's us too, for sure. <laughs> yes. They, uh, I don't think they like it when we put a pile of trash bags on the driveway for a couple of days. <laughs> How do you get rid of mattresses over where you're at? Oh, landfill. Landfill? Just take them to the landfill. Yep. Um, I do that too. And uh, how's, what's your landfill prices over there when you're, I'm curious. Actually, they just started charging us two years ago, I believe it was. And it's a um, hundred dollars for an annual pass that I can go as much as I want all year. Hmm. So it's not too crazily overpriced, but it still ticked me off at some point that uh, <laughs> I had to pay after so many years of not having to pay. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I, and, and, re, and guys, remember when you purchase storage units, it's all, it's not just the unit cost. Then you got to rent a truck if you don't have a truck, right? I, I used to rent U-Hauls. Penske trucks are the cheapest though. Um, so if you don't have a, a vehicle, you got to pay for one. And then you got to think of time. And the one thing that I can tell you about storage unit buying that people don't realize is when you purchase a storage unit, you got a lot of times you got to clean off the items, wash the items. Like there's a lot of prep to it where if you go to a thrift store, a lot of that is already done. Um, so it's all about time management too. When you buy storage units, it does take a lot of time, but the reward is there, right? And the idea of purchasing a lot of inventory for very little per se is really appealing and it helps, you know, help me. So, but, uh, so tell us a little bit about your YouTube channel. What are you trying to accomplish there? What kind of videos are you creating on your YouTube channel now? So basically my YouTube channel was like nothing too special. It's kind of just like I decided to do daily vlogs. I had a couple of friends of mine who told me, um, dude, you should make vlogs about your YouTube and everything. Vlogs are becoming the big new thing nowadays online. So go ahead and do it. Like there's, there'd probably be a lot of people who would be interested in that, especially because there's a TV show about it as well. So I kindly just started doing, um, daily. I try to video as much as I can throughout the day. And, uh, it's, uh, merely just like storage unit stuff where I do like, I'll do time lapses when I'm going through boxes and show kind of what I found that or it's just um hanging out with friends and everything and just kind of showing you showing people what my life's like oh yeah i um i guys i encourage everybody the purpose of this channel is to highlight and showcase really cool people that are talking in the chat that are not necessarily on youtube that much and bring them up and show them to the, everybody that watches this now live and after live 
And that's my goal. For the next remainder of this year, I want to uncover as many cool people as possible that you guys can relate to and, and follow that you don't see on a daily basis. So, And his channel is going to grow tremendously because people love storage units. They love like the whole idea of treasure hunting because it is somewhat modern day treasure hunting, let's be honest. And oh, yeah, um, very true. It is. It's a, it's basically a treasure hunt like every day. Yep. So tell me real quick. I'm, I'm I want to know what, so let's say you're in front of a storage unit and it's live and the auctioneer is going, what does your eyeballs like to see when the storage unit's going? Like, for example, I like to see no, you know, no goodwill tags. Um, I like to see things somewhat neatly boxed, right? What do you like yeah, to see? Um, I like to see, I'm more of the guy who likes boxes and totes and everything like that but i also do like furniture if it's clean wrapped up and nice and everything um i basically look to see how neat it's stacked um if there's how much dust is on it because dust tells you age um if there's like a whole bunch of leaves in there if it's trashy like what kind of like you said goodwill tags is a big one um pressed wood furniture because that just shows that it could be lower quality stuff and then i like to see but at the same time don't like to see jewelry boxes or safes but i've never I've done this for seven years, coming up on seven years now, and never found anything in a safe. Um, but I, I like to see them, but at the same time, I don't because then everyone else sees them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> safes are that, safes are that elusive thing. Um, I've seen a lot of safes. Only one of them has panned out, <clears throat> and um, I've got a few safes. And when you see a safe, you know you're going to pay double the unit. Um, oh yeah, of course. The price is always going to go up when there's a safe. Yep, and and nine times out of ten, there's nothing in that safe. However. It's just the idea of something being in that safe is what people are interested in. Um, so, Deb, um, I would look for a clean and organized unit. <laughs> yep, that's what we... That I love seeing totes. And by the way, um, also another a few tips um, is when you see U-Haul boxes, that's another thing I kind of like to see because U-Haul boxes are not cheap. So they're spending money to purchase U-Haul boxes. Yeah, that's um, a good point too. You make theirs. I, that's a good thing to look for too. Is like if it's an extra space or public storage or something. These people paid money for those boxes. They didn't go to the play, go to like the local store and pick them up for free. Even though you can do that, and there's no issue with it. But they paid money, especially like the big wardrobe boxes and everything, because those I think are like fifteen dollars a piece. Oh, that those are. I've got such a bad story. I'm not going to tell you guys. Shame on me. Um, about the first like 20 storage units I bought, I've, I probably got so much expensive clothes and I never sold on eBay. I donated it all. And now that I'm into clothing, you know, a, a while later, I'm just like, what did I do? Like I wasted so much money. Like I, well, the problem was I was into storage units for a hobby. It wasn't about money for me. And uh, I didn't want to deal with clothes. So I donated it. But looking back, I've donated so many old clothing and Man, I was I was the one that donated the clothing that y'all found at the store, the Goodwill bins. So, pretty sad days. I uh, I don't do that anymore though, guys. Um, yeah, U-Haul boxes are, are are big key. Um, and then another thing that I like to look for is um, they're okay. So nobody wants to buy a storage unit with mattresses, right? We all do though. I like to see how dirt. I know this sounds crazy but I like to see how dirty the mattresses are. Um, and the reason I like to see that is because people that take care of their mattresses will probably take care of their items. And um, I like to see, you know, how well they take care of their items. And that's another kind of thing that you can look for. So storage units though, I can tell you that you, and he, he can probably attest to this. You can have everything lined out in your brain when you go there, but when it's live, it's 10 times faster. So you got to just kind of slow it down. And I think what helps with that is going to a lot of storage unit auctions before you actually start buying any. Yeah, it's very true. Like, like I said earlier in the video, um, as I went for about a year to auctions and just sat in the background and watched, got to know like who was who and everything along those lines. But um, that's another reason where they can go, they can be very fast paced. And um, that's where I like to, when I'm going to bid on something, I always wait till the last minute to bid just because then it gives it more time to where I can, I can have time to think and give the, like I said earlier, the, give the other person more time to think and think if they really want to deal with it or not. Mm -hmm. but plus they see your beard and they see, they're like, I don't want to mess with that guy. <laughs> have you seen any fights or any, any scrimmages? No, I haven't heard. I haven't seen any. I heard about there was almost um, a fight, like a fist fight at one 
uh, about a couple weeks ago down in Richmond. But other than that, no. I mean, most of the guys, we're all friends with each other. We've got each other's phone numbers, and it's nothing too crazy. Yep, there's co a common bond with people that do storage units. There um, is. So have you had any of the storage unit owners go to the auction to bid on their items? Yeah, that I have. Um, I actually had one that's in one of my recent videos on YouTube where it was the first time in almost seven years that I sold back a unit to the owner. I went through it and I told her I was going to dig through it and make sure that there wasn't anything worth of anything in there. And um, she came and I paid like $80 for it and I told I sold it back to her for 200 So. Yep, you got to incorporate your time. That happens a lot. So what happens at the opposite end of the storage unit empire? Do they... Oh, okay. Um, give me one second. Let me... All right, guys. So let me explain the process. And this process may vary. Um, this process may vary between, you know, corporate companies, mom and pop storage units. The process of losing a unit is this. And it, obviously, this can be different via state as well. So you have a storage facility, right? The storage facility wants to recoup money that somebody owes them. So if I am renting a storage facility and I don't pay my bill and a month goes by, a lot of times they give, they call you, they give you a time to pay and I still don't pay. Then another month goes by and then they want partial payments, right? Now they're going to try to recoup their money. It's actually better for the facilities to recoup the money with the tenant than it is to hire a... Um, uh, auctioneer to, to auction it off. It's better for them to get their money back. They don't want to lose people. They would much rather get the money. But a lot of times they lose people. This can happen many ways. They they can um, get incarcerated, which is very common. Um, they can not... People think it. You know, people lose storage units because of money. And that's a good portion, but that's a very small portion of why they lose their unit. There's a lot of other reasons too, right? Um, they move out of the state. They just don't want it anymore. There's there's what's called um, um, what is that what is that called where they can sell the if they're in good standings yet they sell the unit themselves or they they have them auction off the unit themselves. What is that called? I'm not 100 percent um, sure. As to I don't even I know what you're talking about, but I don't remember. Yeah, they can do that basically. Yeah. But anyways, to answer your question, um, they don't pay. The facility tries to get money now. Let's say I don't pay for two months. The facility tries to get money. So what will happen is, is I'll make partial payments. Well, until I pay it off in, in entirely, they're going to lock the unit so I can't get any of my merchandise out. Because if they fear that I'm not going to pay, they need all that stuff in there. So when the auction happens, they can get a bigger bid price and they can get the, the, um, the, the yeah, private sell. Good grandma. I appreciate that. Private sell. Sorry. Um, I don't, by the way, don't buy private sells. If there's a private cell, I know I'm going on a tangent. I don't buy private cells because private cells, they still can go on the unit, grab all the good stuff, and then just auction off the stuff they don't want. So I wouldn't do that. But anyways, um, any rate, so um, the facility tries to get the money back. They can't get the money back. They lock the unit, and then it will go up for auction. Now, once it goes up for auction, the facility has to notify the local paper. So they have to put, you know, John Snow is going to lose the unit. And um, they'll put the time of the auction that way, possibly if John is incarcerated or, um, you know, he can, he, he basically can't get in contact. They, 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 they got to at least put it out there that he's losing the unit legally. So that's where um, using like storage unit auction list.com. I did a video on that. What goes in handy because it's really hard to find some of these auctions and that site kind of puts all the information on one pretty site uh, site to then find these storage auctions. Did I say that kind of correctly? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's exactly about how it goes. We've been having a big issue in our area for a while, especially with extra space recently, is um, they've been taking partial payments. Like say someone owes $500 on a unit. They've been taking, they tell the owner, oh, if you give us $300, we'll let you go into your unit for 48 hours. And then after that, we're going to overlock it again, but we need that other $200. So what people have been doing is doing the partial payment going in taking everything they want and then leaving the trash for us. Yep. And Which another tip too, guys. terrible recently. Yeah. And and let's say you roll up on a 10 by 10 unit or a 5 by 5 unit, but you know it works with bigger units. And you see the unit and it's half full and it's a 10 by 10 or 10 by 25 or whatever. Then that is a unit you probably want to stay away from because technically who would rent a 10 by 10 unit and only have a half full, right? So they probably grabbed a lot of the stuff that they wanted 
prior to, to, you know, getting out of bad standing with the, the facility. Yeah. I've seen that a lot of times, but then there's also been units like that too, where I just don't understand why they rent such a small unit or a big unit. And then when they'll rent a 10 by 10 or a 10 by 15, when everything could fit into a five by 10 Oh yeah, and uh, they do that, but then they've actually turned out to be pretty good units. So it's kind yeah, of yeah. a toss up. You can kind of tell once you've been doing it for a while. I, I bet you know that as well. Mm-hmm. Do you get any managers? Have you ever, have you have you seen any manager specials? Oh yeah, we've got plenty of them, especially with this new uh, with their whole partial payments they've been going on. <laughs> you gotta, gotta, I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, you know, let's manager let, specials. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I laugh when people buy those. Oh okay. yeah, me too. We all know it right when they open. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then everyone just turns around and leaves. <laughs> Okay, I'll give you another tip, guys. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so manager special is this. Um, and the only reason I laugh is it's like it it got me when I was first starting too. So I can't I can't uh, hate on it too much. But um, so a manager special is the facility has like four or five units that pretty much doesn't have very good stuff in it. Meaning um, they know if they auction it off, nobody's probably going to buy it. And so what they do is they combine all that stuff into one unit. And that's what's called a manager special because the manager takes all that stuff instead of paying to have it dumped. They'll put it in one unit and then they'll auction off that unit and see if somebody buys it. That's a manager special. Oh yeah. It's, it's always the ones with the three tube TVs and four chairs. And <laughs> mm-hmm. so if you see John snow go up there, and <laughs> uh, do you get any, do you get a lot of units that go for a dollar? Oh yeah, yeah. We've got a lot to go for a dollar, and then we recently with all these partials, we've had units that don't even sell. I mean, there's plenty of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, guys. There's and that's what's cool. Let me explain. So a lot of units do go for a dollar here in Oregon and other states. So if you don't, if you're, if you don't have a big budget, you're gonna make your money back on all these dollar units. In fact, there's some of these dollar units I should be picking up because it has sacks and sacks and sacks of clothes. So you purchase a, for example, um, recently there was a dollar unit that went up for sale and somebody bought it. It had one big mattress, and then it had a bunch of sacks of clothes. All right, so you're not gonna go wrong buying these clothes. You just you pay for the unit, wash the clothes, and sell it on eBay. You'll you'll make your money tenfold, right? But the problem is, is people don't want to deal with the one mattress, so. That's why I recommend if you're on a small budget, you can get those units cheap. Um, just because there's a mattress in there, people don't want to pick it up and you can pick everything else up. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's about how it works around here too. Um, there's plenty of times where there's like one good thing in there, but then there's two things that need to go to the trash and no one wants to deal with having to drive back there for it. Mm-hmm. We have a kind of a thing that goes between the guys that uh, I buy with that we, um, if someone bought one, say the first unit and then like the third unit is... Um, a manager special or it's just a mattress and a couple other things. Then we always turn to them. It's like, Hey, you got to come back. We don't. So you can have it for a dollar. You can have half the time. They'll just give them away to us for free. Oh yeah. They don't, Cause if they don't sell it, then they have to pay a company to come clean it out. How important is it to be extremely nice to the, um, the people that work at the facilities, for example, the people that actually are behind the desk. It, I think it's really important. So, just like if you guys walk into a retail store and you talk with the managers at Ross Dress for Less or you talk with the managers, you want to be extremely nice. I think it's the same thing goes for storage unit buying. You want to be extremely nice to the people behind the counter because a lot of times I can call them up and they can't tell me a lot of stuff, but they can tell me how long the unit's been there and give me a little insight before I show up at the facility. That way I know it's worth my time. Oh yeah, that's very true. Especially with that because you can get a little insight on the unit. <clears throat> excuse me and then you can also um if you say you're running later you bought too many units you can just talk to them be like hey can i have an extra day on this and if they know you from being a buyer it's going to be no issue that or even if you're nice to them they can be like yeah okay an extra 24 hours is fine whatever yep <clears throat> and you you have to um your word is your bond in the storage unit buying you know atmosphere so when you buy a unit you want to clean it out nicely make sure it's nice um, because that stuff does get around quick oh of course yeah it, it will get around very quick or there's, I've seen at times where people get banned from auctions um, because they leave trash or something. I always carry the broom and dustpan in the truck and sweep everything out mm-hmm. completely. Yep. Uh, do you think you're going to be doing storage unit buying for the rest of your life? Yeah, 
we'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I've always said I wanted to open an auction house just for I, – I like the auction setting, and then it's a quicker return on investment as well. Mm-hmm. Well, guys, I can tell you this has been one of my fun – most. it's been extremely fun for me to do this interview because it's fun to talk with somebody. If, if you guys are in a profession like reselling, and you can talk to people that are in like have the same like you know um you know get the same jitters that you do about you know a certain subject or a certain item uh like like uh like storage units or you know vintage dresses or something it's just fun to talk to i can literally talk like three hours on storage units oh yeah yeah <laughs> it's so very funny. true what's uh wh- like ha- have you heard any just like you know those the people that you know try to get coins and gold and everything on islands and you know crazy stuff like that you always hear these mystical storage units people that made a ton of money on a storage unit have you heard any of those like is there any story a story that you want to tell real quick um yeah, let me think, I could probably think of, oh there's <clears throat> i mean there's been a couple and it's mainly like people buying cat like buying a unit that has a bunch of cash in it uh one guy said he found like over fourteen thousand in cash in a unit um other than that not off the top of my head i can't think of any yep i uh <clears throat> you do find cash you find a lot of coins i find a lot of coins from different countries a lot of um uh money from different countries and i keep it for Cade when he gets older um so the coins stuff like that i keep um you find a lot of baseball cards basketball cards a lot of that stuff because that stuff you find i can tell you right now guys you're gonna find a lot of christmas stuff oh yeah Oh yeah, be prepared. Are you? Are you? Do you, I bet you are set on Christmas, aren't you? Oh, I could be uh, easily. <laughs> easily, you're gonna find a lot of that. Um, you. I, I think it's funny. I don't know if this applies to you as well, but I find things in waves. I swear it works in waves. Like there's a time. There was one at one point where I had never found a lawnmower, and then I bought a unit and it had a lawnmower in it. And then like in my next five units in a row had lawnmowers. Oh yeah. I, I swear I find things in waves. I find like one thing and then I'll find like 10 more of them in the next two weeks. So I'll tell you a quick story and then I'll be respectful of your time because it's already been over an hour, but <laughs> you're such an amazing guest. Um, so I found these, uh, I bought this unit for 150 bucks and um, it had vintage, I mean, really old um, German nutcrackers and, um, and uh, Christmas nutcrackers, you know? And mm-hmm. uh, Ashley saw those things, and guess how many I sold? Zero. <laughs> she took them all. <laughs> these things were worth a lot of money. That's um, she still ha- she still has them. Um, and, but and we bought. I don't know if I did a storage um, video, and I bought this. There's this life. I bought the storage unit, and we found this life size Santa in it. <laughs> she loves it she loves it it's funny but yeah you're gonna find a lot of christmas a lot of christmas stuff guys um you guys need to uh if you're into christmas stuff and and you're gonna buy you're, if you buy a lot of storage units you're gonna find so much christmas stuff that it's gonna get irritating because it's like christmas christmas another christmas box you know yeah, literally that's how it is so I, and, and it's if you have like if your mom or your wife or something goes and they find a bunch of christmas you're your house quickly gets i mean <laughs> we can show you guys over here but uh okay now oh, you can't see let me see okay so all behind there behind the shoes is christmas and then we have a trailer with a bunch of christmas and we have some christmas in the house still that uh we have so it's uh ashley's in love with christmas and, and that's one thing that she loves about storage units but um all right, guys. So let's let's stay out here for another five minutes. Throw in some questions if you got any questions about storage unit buying. Um, I can tell you that I am super excited to uncover him. Sub to his YouTube channel and guys, click the like button below if you like this video, um, or click any one you want um, because this will get it out on YouTube land. And I just want to tell you guys, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, I'll be interviewing amazing guests just like this one. And so you guys stay tuned. That's our plan. Um, that's the main main goal for YouTube, for Wade, uh, Wade's Ventures YouTube channel. And then I'll do other tutorial videos. But throw some questions in here. And before we get going, where can people find you? I know we threw out your YouTube channel, but can you throw out your Instagram too? 
Yeah, you can uh, follow me on Instagram, and I'll type it again down here. If you haven't, if no one's noticed, I'm Corey Woods down in the chat. Um, I'm on my own YouTube account. But uh, you can follow me at Storage Unit Hunter on Instagram. It's actually kind of funny that I've only been, I think I've, I've only been doing Instagram. I can pull it up real quick. Dab. I've only been on Instagram for, I think, like three or four months. Um, I started my Instagram on November 29th. Of and you already have almost 800 people. That's amazing. Deb, we love yep, you. I'm sitting, I'm sitting at right about, I think, 700 followers or something or 700 and some odd. Cindy says, sell the clothes to resellers. That's what we should do. That's what we should do. Um, oh, yes. Oh, yes, Deb. I, 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 uh, we have two Debs in the house? Let me see. We do. Yes, follow him on Instagram. He's crushing it. I'm going to do a post on Instagram after this live show. Um, <clears throat> you guys, I'm telling you, uh, storage units are fun. Get coffee. Get coffee. Um, get something to drink. Look up the storage unit facilities. You know, storageauctionunitlist.com. I did a video on it. Um, they give, I believe, free... Is it free 10 days or free seven days without pain? Okay, um, so cool. I've been subscribed for like three years. Yeah. So just, just subscribe to that channel uh, for like, you know, seven to 10 days free. Um, find out what are in your area. You can filter by state. And then on Saturday, bring the bring the family and just go see what it's like to, to do a storage unit. Uh, bring maybe a hundred bucks cash. And if you're serious about it, just buy a cheap, cheap unit and get your hands wet. Uh, but I can tell you, don't um when you buy your first unit don't base that on what it's going to be like going forward it's always something different and typically when you buy your first three units it's not as good so you know you're learning yeah, that's very true um and then also you can look on there you can also check out auctionzip.com that's one that i use and that's going to bring you like actual auctioneers and you just type in your zip code and your mileage and that's a free website you can use and then also you can check out in your local paper Ours, it shows it in the legal section, like where you can buy and sell things and where all the trustee auctions are, but it's under there in a public auction. And I actually made a video. Um, I put it up last week about how to buy storage auction or about buy storage units. Yes. He put an amazing video up how to buy storage units, guys. Go check it out. We always got to support the people that have amazing flush beards on my channel. We have a few of them. Um, all right, guys. So that being said, I, I just want to say everybody that has joined my channel that came from Ryan and Ali's channel last night, I really appreciate you. Um, everybody that has joined me from day one, I appreciate you. Um, it's really important. We're going quick. We're at 22 or we're going on 2200 people on my YouTube channel in three months. I mean, I've done older videos, but done the bulk of my stuff in the last three months. So that's insane. I hope to be there one day. Oh, we will make sure because it's, it, that's the purpose of this is to highlight people like you. And I think it's going to be amazing. I'll help you in every, any way possible. Any, everybody knows here in chat that I am a big supporter of people starting their own YouTube channels. So, all right, guys, that being said, do you have any inspirational words for me? For them? Any, any, no, I'm, I'm reading the chat right now. Sorry. <laughs> any eBay tips? What would be an eBay tip? That's a damn good question. Mm -hmm. Um, sell as much as you can yeah pretty much that's what i was about to say just push and list as much as you can i feel like the more you list the more you sell mm -hmm. that's how it you, works that's what i was doing right before i uh hit the live chat as i was listing on ebay any words of inspirational you know juju you want to throw out there just everyone get out there try try out storage auctions there's nothing against it just go out there and check out the auction and uh even then you can compare it to tv as well you can tell people oh yeah i've been there i've been to an auction i bought a unit or something like that even if it's something just to do on the side, make a couple extra bucks. Go ahead. Have at it. It's a yep. fun time. Frosty, I appreciate you coming from Ryan and Allie. They're amazing, amazing people. Leave in the comments if you have any questions, guys. I will be answering questions after this shows up. And this is Wade's Ventures, guys. You guys have an amazing day. And please um, subscribe to his channel. I'll put that below in the description. And there's the link. All right, guys. Until tomorrow. <laughs>